This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and this is the HTC Incredible 2 on Verizon. Obviously this is the follow-up to the Incredible and some folks have been moaning and complaining, well gee it's not that much better than the original Incredible. I don't think it's designed to entice you folks who bought an Incredible just a year ago or less to upgrade to Incredible 2. I'm sure HTC would rather you get the Thunderbolt and move up the chain and Samsung would like you to get maybe the Samsung Droid Charge. But for folks who are using something like a Droid Aris or an older phone and who are out of contract and ready for an upgrade, it's certainly an enticing piece of hardware. The original Incredible was one of Verizon's top sellers and one of the top selling phones in the US actually and I think that this one's going to do well too. Granted a lot has changed in a year and there weren't that many high-end Android phones just a year ago to choose from and now obviously you have a lot of choices but still this is a really solid offering. We'll take a look at the Overall design first, you've got a 4-inch Super LCD display here. The old Incredible had a 3.7-inch AMOLED, not Super AMOLED, just AMOLED display. And this one's very bright and sharp. I like it a lot. Resolution is 800 by 480, kind of standard Android high-end phone. You have your capacitive buttons down here that are backlit, earpiece, nice soft touch coating. And we've got that sculpted back, not quite as waterfalled as the original Incredible, but still it makes for an interesting looking design and makes it easier to hold. It allows the edges to be slimmer because HTC can bulge out the back to fit in all the internals. Okay, 8 megapixel shooter back here, dual LED flash. Same resolution as the last Incredibles camera, takes even better pictures and can shoot 720p video now though. Got your speaker back here. Volume controls, micro USB port. Nothing down here except for the grab point to pull the back off to access the battery and SIM card slot. And your 3.5 millimeter and power up here. Speaking of the SIM card slot, this has a SIM card slot because it's a world phone. We'll yank off the back and show you. This is not an LTE SIM card that's under the battery. This is a SIM card slot for roaming internationally, something the original Incredible didn't offer. The battery is 1450 milliamps. And your micro SD card slot is right here. And Verizon includes a 16 gig card. The phone also has a gig of internal storage and it's running on a second generation 1 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon CPU with Adreno 205 graphics. So that's a big step up there at one generation from the original Incredible. And Quadrant benchmarks are quite good. We've been seeing scores around 1650 with this phone, so it is faster. It's the same CPU that's also used in the Thunderbolt and the HTC Inspire 4G on AT&T. We have the usual trio of wireless on board, Wi-Fi 802.11, BGN, Bluetooth, and a GPS. And this is a 3G phone, no 4G here. It sells for $199 versus $249 for the Thunderbolt. And we're not sure how many people are going to go for this versus the Thunderbolt, assuming you're in a 4G coverage area, because data speeds are a lot faster. We're seeing about 800k down and up on the phone both, interesting that, versus somewhere between 11 and 13 megs down and 2 to 5 megs up on the Thunderbolt and Droid Charge. So if fast data speeds are of the utmost importance to you, particularly if you're going to use the 3G hotspot and tethering, well, there's, there's something that's going to help you make your decision right there. That said, the Thunderbolt and the Droid Charge are both larger phones. And we'll whip out the Droid Charge here so you can see the difference. So for some of you who don't want a behemoth in your pocket and 3G is good enough for you, well, there it is. Another selling point for this is it has Froyo 2.2. That's not so exciting, but it's HTC Sense, which is our favorite customization of Android from a user interface standard and it, it doesn't really bog down the phone a lot but it does add a lot of enhancements. Also you've got the now famous HTC flip clock up here and other user interface enhancements. See right here. For example you can hit this to see all of your icons. You can hit that for your most used and this to go straight to ones that you've downloaded yourself which is pretty nice. Software on here is pretty much the standard Google affair. You do have Google search happily on the phone. And we've got some of HTC's usual stuff like their FM radio. Besides Sense, we've got Footprints and a lot of the other value-added apps that we like a lot. And 
We've got a littering of Verizon apps on here. Uh, Verizon's going maybe a little bit overboard with that. Vcast Media, Vcast Music, Vcast Tones, Vcast Videos, VZ Navigator, of course that can be very useful. That's spoken turn by turn directions and it's optimized for Android. Cost $10 a month. We've got some other uh, Verizon apps on board as well. Like City ID, eh, not so much of a value added. Third party apps include Blockbuster, Adobe Reader, Let's Golf 2, NFL Mobile from Verizon, Need for Speed Shift Demo, and Skype Mobile, of course, because Verizon and Skype have a deal going, and Slacker Radio. While we're speaking of 3G versus 4G, one thing to keep in mind is 3G phones do tend to have better battery life. We only have two LTE 4G smartphones on the market now. The Thunderbolt, who has famously bad battery life, but then also low capacity battery, and the Droid Charge, which is doing better in terms of battery life, still not super duper. Speed and responsiveness on the phone are top notch, very good. And of course, since this is Froyo, we've got Adobe Flash Player on board. I will check that out. We'll visit our own website, and you can see HTC's usual pleasant customization of the Android keyboard here. And now we're loading our website. Usual pinch zooming responsiveness. And it's working on downloading some Flash banner ads right now, but we're going to take a look at Flash video review. Single core CPU, so we don't expect absolutely amazing performance here, but you never know. The second gen Qualcomm CPU is, is pretty solid. And we are doing this over Verizon's EVDO Reve 3G network. Not too bad. And now we've switched to full screen mode. It's a little less than responsive, I have to say, in terms of controls. That's an ongoing problem with Adobe Flash Player, especially on single core CPUs, but once you get the controls going, it plays pretty well. One thing to notice here is the buttons. These are capacitive backlit buttons, but the icons actually change with the orientation. That nice little home, the house over here, has moved so that the house peak is still facing up. Turn the phone to portrait mode, you see the buttons have flipped. So it's a small thing, but it's pretty cool. And very convenient. In terms of call quality and reception, it's good the phone has good reception. It, not as impressive as some Motorola's phones like the Droid X and the uh, the Droid that had really, really good reception, but it's good certainly middle of the road to a little bit better middle of the road reception on Verizon's EVDO network and on their One X network. Call quality, really good. So noise canceling mic system, both incoming and outgoing voice sound landline good on this phone. And certainly a lot better than the Droid Charge, hate to say. But the Thunderbolt is also, again, an alternative if you're thinking of a 4G phone, and that does have good voice quality. In terms of gaming performance, the Adreno 205 graphics are quite good. We're going to test out Need for Speed. So here we are in the ubiquitous Need for Speed. It seems to be bubbling with every phone and tablet these days. Accelerometer based racing game. Gotta watch out for that glare. And it handles the game perfectly well, and you can hear the speakers are pretty loud too. So that's the HTC Droid Incredible 2, available now on Verizon for $199 with a two year contract. It's a solid mid, mid to high end Android phone with 1 GHz second generation CPU. A 4-inch Super LCD display and the usual trio of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, and 3G data. For 50 bucks more, you can get HTC's very nice Thunderbolt. But it's up to you, again, taking into consideration size and battery life, too, versus a 4G phone. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read the full review.